Congratulations to all of you. As the small business community, I feel that I work for you every day. And this week is an opportunity for us to celebrate all of what you do throughout the whole year in San Jose and throughout the country. Um, it's really a privilege for us to be here. I think that this is that week that all of the good work that you do throughout the year is the time that it all gets celebrated. So with that, I want to congratulate you as all small business folks, because for SBA, for me as a small business administration, employee. I work for you, and I am proud to be able to do that. Um, I also want to thank all of you for getting up bright and early this morning to get here to San Jose to be celebrating small business with us. But no one's got up earlier and brighter than Kira no Villanova, who is our MC today. Kira is a, a multi-Emmy award-winning anchor for Univision, and she was in her San Francisco studio early this morning doing her live program this morning. And so she's come down even brighter and definitely earlier than all the rest of us. So with that, let me turn it over to Kira. I actually never went to sleep, so that's OK. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. And welcome to this beautiful, beautiful location in this beautiful, beautiful city, one of the most beautiful in the country and definitely in the Bay Area. It's really my pleasure to be your MC today because we have a very exciting morning planned for you. Welcome to National Small Business Week by the US Small Business Administration. Here in San Jose, 60% of 55,000 small businesses are minority owned, and 51% are owned by immigrants. Interesting fact, the majority of them speak Spanish and Vietnamese. So good morning, buenos dias, and chao busang. Did I say that right? <laughs> As a proud Latina, it, of course, nothing makes me more grateful than the tremendous value that new Americans add to our country and our economy through hard work, through perseverance, through entrepreneurship. So I thank you for that, and this event, of course, is for you. Every year since 1963, the president of this country highlights the importance of small businesses through his compromise, his so far, maybe her in the future. National Sm Small Business Week has a proclamation. This year, the theme is dream big, start small. And I personally think that's a philosophy that applies to everything in life. So you are all a great example for all of us. Before we continue, I want to invite you to join the conversation in social media. So if you can tag your pictures, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, I can't keep up, but if you have one or two of those social media uh, mediums, please do with the hashtag small, sorry, dream small biz with a letter, letter Z. Dream small biz, hashtag them all, and we can get something trending today. Today, uh, this morning marks the final day of a week that began on May 1st, and this week was also celebrated in places like Washington, D.C., New York, Denver, and Phoenix. The US Small Business Administration, as you saw in that video, helps Americans start, build, and grow businesses and has been doing so since 1953. And since 2012, it serves as a cabinet-level agency of the federal government. Its mission is to aid, counsel, assist, and protect the interests of small business concerns, preserve free competitive enterprise, and to maintain and strengthen the overall economy of our big, wonderful nation. So you may find more information at sba.gov. Let's take a brief moment to thank our sponsors without whom this wouldn't be possible. Chase for Business, SCORE, ADP, Colonial Life, Intuit, Sam's Club, Square, YP, ESET, Facebook, Instagram, Lockheed Martin, Microsoft, and the National Association of Government Guaranteed Lenders, and VEDC. Thank you to all of them. Let me now, of course, they deserve it. Thank you. Let me now introduce our first protagonist, the mayor of this wonderful city. He would like to share some words with us. Mayor Sam Licardo became one of the youngest mayors of the city's modern history when he took office when he was only 44. And by then, he already had an important history that prepared him for the job. He served twice in the San Jose City Council from the third district, and he also knows the city very well. In fact, he still lives east of downtown in the same north side neighborhood where his father was raised. 
and a dozen blocks or so from the neighborhood grocery store that his grand Sicilian grandparents op operated decades ago. Sam Licardo has even taught at San Jose State University. Please welcome Mayor Sam Licardo. Welcome. Kinchao Cuide. Bienvenidos a todos. It's great to have you all here. I am so thrilled to see a great collection of our leaders in the business community, particularly our small business owners. You are the lifeblood of our economy. You are also a beacon of opportunity for everyone here in our city and throughout the country. Thank you for being here. Uh, I am also very honored uh, to be able to welcome Administrator Maria Contreras Sweet here to San Jose. Uh, welcome home. Uh, she has served her nation and continues to do so in Washington, D.C., but has also served us here in California, uh, in Sacramento, and certainly in Los Angeles as well. It is great to have someone in the position, the leadership of SBA, who is both a tremendous leader for small business in our country, as well as a compañera to the immigrant business community. Uh, and we know a little bit about the immigrant business community here in San Jose and Silicon Valley. Uh, as was just mentioned, half of our small businesses are led by someone who was born in a foreign country. Equally important, half of our venture-backed startup tech companies in this valley are headed up by someone who was born in a foreign country. Whether it's a taqueria or the latest innovation, leadership is being exerted by those who have come to us from all over the world. And we need to be there to support your success and your growth. I want to uh, in particular thank an awful lot of partners who came together to make this happen today. Uh, Mark Quinn and Mark Schindler at the SBA, thank you for bringing us together and, and hosting and sponsoring us. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. I also want to thank on our Work to Future team, uh, led by Jeff Ruster, uh, BJ Sims, and Des Woodworth, for your hard work as you continue to reach out and bring people in to see how we can expand opportunity. Thank you, Jeff, to you and your team. I know we're also joined by representative from Congressman Honda's office. I want to certainly acknowledge them for their support. Uh, thank you very much. And I want to particularly acknowledge a couple of partners of ours on business owner space. I think if you don't know about business owner space, you're going to find out a lot today, I expect. This is an incredible collaboration we have with a lot of community partners uh, to help businesses get access to capital, uh, help with uh, permit assistance, tax assistance, all the many ways in which we can support our growing businesses. We really want to thank PayPal for their work on our website, which has just relaunched in Spanish, Vietnamese, and English. So thank you, PayPal. And uh, thanks to Wells Fargo for your great partnership as well on business owner space. We're very proud of this collaboration. We've got many community partners. I see them as I look around today, as I look at Dennis King and Carlos Figueroa and many people who have been working so many years to bring businesses together to see how we can do a better job of serving you in our community. So thank you all for your great work. We look forward to continuing to work with you and support your growth as you continue to make us proud here in San Jose. Thank you. Santa Clara County Board President Dave Cortez is also here to join us this morning, and he also grew up in San Jose as part of a family that has been active in civic, cultural, and business activities for generations. Prior to joining the board and being elected as president, David Cortez served eight years on the San Jose City Council, including two years as vice mayor. Also very relevant to today is that President Cortez ran his own businesses for years, so he knows the challenges of the business environment, both from the perspective of small business owners and the recent immigrants who are striving for the American dream. To share some words with us this morning, please help me welcome President Dave Cortez. Thank you, Kira, for that nice introduction. Thank you all for the warm welcome. I'm 
very honored to be here representing uh, the County of Santa Clara and the Board of Supervisors. You know, Mayor Lucardo and I have something um, in common, more than just one thing, but something that's very pertinent today. You know, his grandparents used to run a store, a small business, um, a little grocery store just a couple blocks away from where we are right now. My immigrant grandfather used to frequent that store uh, for groceries. He lived on 11th Street and was a small business person from the age of 19 years old on uh, to the day he passed on uh, at 96 years old. Um, yes, I did um, conduct and run my own businesses here, uh, particularly in East San Jose, uh, for over 15 years, and I'm still involved with those businesses. So the mayor and I are here in a spirit of solidarity with all of you from the small business community, and we thank the, uh, the ethnic chambers, um, the entire small business community for what they've done and what they continue to do. Mayor Lucaro and I had a chance to meet this morning before coming out here and talk about what more we can do. And we want you to know that we're extremely focused um, on how we can do a better job of outreach to the small business community. And I think we're here together, county and city, to kind of usher in a new era of the city and the county working together to help all of you share in the prosperity and grow your businesses. That prosperity is a big deal, right? Um, we heard some of the immigrant numbers just a few minutes ago, but 40% of all of our residents in Santa Clara County are foreign born, but think about this one. We have one of the top three per capita gross domestic products here in this metropolitan area of anywhere in the world, anywhere in the world. You could check Forbes, you can check whoever you want, those numbers hold up. 47%, 7% more than our actual immigrant population, our foreign-born population, produces that GDP. So our immigrant populations are overproductive here relative to the rest of the economy, overproductive. And the other thing Mayor Licardo and I were talking about is therefore how do we connect um, the driving industries, the tech sector, um, who are already far far along in globalization, to say the least, um, with this sector, the small business sector, to make sure that that prosperity and those opportunities, which are global, um, are, are continued, uh, continued to be developed here, but also ushered into the small business community in ways that you can't do on your own. Uh, so the mayor and I are committed to that. And I want to tell you we're proud at the County of Santa Clara uh, to finance, to support uh, through annual general fund budget augmentations, the Small Business Development Center here in San Jose um, will continue to do that. And a new initiative that I just talked to our county executive about a couple of days ago, um, and that is we know that a huge barrier to small businesses participating in government contracts is the ability to secure payment and performance bonds because you're asked to put up collateral. You're asked to mortgage your house or your business to do that. Uh, we are on the way. Uh, to proposing a self-insurance fund at the County of Santa Clara that allows small businesses to participate in two and a half billion dollars worth of county contracts without having to collateralize, without having to put up uh, their own security for payment and performance bonds. We think that will help. So thank you uh, to our SBA Administrator, Maria Contreras-Sweet. Thank you for allowing me a few minutes to, to speak ahead of you. Thank you to the mayor for your gracious hospitality. We look forward to having you over at the county uh, next month when we do a business expo there. And uh, to all of you, wish you great prosperity during the coming year. Thank you. Thank you, President Cortese. Our next guest has been very, very busy traveling across the country because she has attended every Small Business Week event I mentioned earlier, from DC to Denver and everything in between. Administrator Maria Contreras Sweet was sworn in as the 24th Administrator of the US Small Business Administration and as a member of President Obama's cabinet on April 7, 2014. She was a business leader, California State Cabinet official and entrepreneur before she was an administrator. Contreras Suite started three businesses, including a community bank in downtown LA, focused on small and mid-sized businesses, and her path started quite early. 
At the age of 24, she served as a district manager for the U.S. Census Bureau, hiring and managing 700 employees. She was 24. <laughs> Administrator Contreras Sweet is a founding director of the California Endowment, which is a $3 billion foundation dedicated to improving the health status of Californians. And she sees entrepreneurship as a force that can change lives and lift whole communities around the world. And we are lucky to have her here today. Please help me welcome SBA Administrator Maria Contreras Sweet. Hola, how's everybody doing today? Listen, I am very grateful that you all brought me out from Washington, D.C. No, but truly, it is the best time, in my view, to be the voice for small businesses in America. Can you imagine to get that call from President Obama asking me to join his cabinet and to amplify the voice of entrepreneurs around the world? What a joy and how humbling. I want to thank Kira for that very generous introduction, but I also want to pause and just thank all of the men and women across the country who represent the U.S. Small Business Administration who have been traveling with me and some have been anchor tenants back in Washington, D.C. to make sure that this all flowed smoothly. We started in Washington, D.C. with Mark Cuban. We went to New York to the Apollo Theater to join some millennials, including the, design, the brand designer for Beyonce. You can tell I got no tips from him. And uh, then we went on to beautiful, beautiful uh, Denver and met up with a whole lot of interesting women to lift up women entrepreneurs. We went to Phoenix to celebrate the unsung heroes and all the men and women who have served us in uniform. And today we're here to celebrate new Americans. Thank you for all of your hospitality while we have been here. Thank you. And I want to acknowledge all of your wise, sage wisdom and selection to have elected somebody the quality of Supervisor Cortese, who is so committed to entrepreneurship. And no doubt your mayor, uh, Mayor Licardo, is equally committed. Thank you so much both for your leadership. Thank you so much. Do you know that small businesses today, you will hear us say it over and over again. I sit at Cabinet and I'm so proud that this morning we just down, announced another strong month of continuous job growth. I think we're up to now 74 months of consecutive job growth, which has never ever happened in the history of the U.S. Never happened. But it's my great pleasure to lean forward and say, but Mr. President, the majority, two thirds of those jobs are coming from small businesses and small businesses today employ half of the private workforce. And so here in San Jose, we see that equally so, you are the backbone of this growing economy that now makes San Jose the 10th largest economy in the country. Congratulations. I was told that there are now 75,000 small businesses in the city and that you represent 60% of you are minority owned and more than half of you are, are immigrants. Raise your hand if you are an immigrant. Awesome, very nice. Well, surrounding you then are the men and women from all over the world who are leading America's economy for the 21st century. The truth is, however, that we are all immigrants. With the exception of our firstborn, the Native Americans, none of us is truly from America, but we are all of America, precisely because of the journeys our families took to get us here. It may have been your parents, or your grandparents, or their parents, or their grandparents, but someone in your lineage wanted America for you. Someone took a long, hard journey, and that's the thread that binds us all here today. Dr. King's immortal words still ring true. We may have all come here on different boats, but we're all in the same boat now. The genius of America is that we are in a st constant state of reinvention. We welcome newcomers who are hungry 
They are driven. They are smart. They're innovative. We know the immigrant journey is rarely easy. It takes courage to believe in all of this and to leave your friends, your family, your neighbors, your culture, and your native country behind. It takes an explorer's heart, a yearning, a yearning to learn new things, to meet new people, and discover new ways, a willing to start from scratch and build something from nothing. In short, that is the essence of Americana, the entrepreneurial spirit. That's why, on behalf of President Obama, I am so honored to have been leading across the country the National Small Business Week. And here in San Jose, we close it out on day five. Our theme has been, as you have heard from Kira and others, dream big, start small. That's what my agency is all about, to help entrepreneurs pursue big dreams one small step at a time. We're the U.S. Small Business Administration, and many of you know us for the three C's. We have the largest counseling system in the world. We are the largest fund of funds. We're the largest contract operation. If you want access to markets, the U.S. government is the largest procurer in the world. We make those connections. And the entrepreneurs we've helped have grown companies into some of those successful in the history of mankind. Maybe you have heard of some of them. A little company came to us in their nascent stage called Apple, the inventor of the iPhone. You may have heard of FedEx, the world's largest shipping company. You may have heard of Nike, the sports apparel that convinced young kids that they could fly. Recently, I was at a dinner in New York, and a handsome young gentleman approached me, and he said, it was a $150,000 loan that no one else would give me until I got to SBA that helped me start my little company. And from that $150,000, I've grown a company today that's called Under Armour. The SBA helped finance these companies when they were starting out, and the reward has been billions in revenue for our economy and jobs for millions of people and new products that shape the society around the world. The SBA has helped businesses go from small to scale. I could go on and on about how many we have started. AOL, Intel, Sun Microsystems, Ben & Jerry's, Tesla, Costco, Quiznos, iRobot, Yankee Candles, Outback Steakhouse. Well, anyway, you don't want me to keep bragging. <laughs> but here in San Jose, you have such an intentionality about it. You have such a great concentration here that has harnessed the wonderful immigrant population that comes from throughout the hemisphere. More Hispanics are starting businesses than any other immigrant group in America today. Hispanic entrepreneurs now number more than three million strong. We contribute nearly half a trillion dollars to the nation's economy every year half a trillion with the T as in Tom. We see the influence of new Americans throughout the Silicon Valley. Immigrants today represent 13% of our country's population, but they represent 26% of our science and engineering workforce. Immigrants are twice as likely to get a patent and twice as likely to start a business. Over the decade, the number of immigrants starting their own high-tech companies has increased by two-thirds. In fact, one-third of U.S. startups have gone public and did so with an immigrant founder. We now know that of the Fortune 500, 40% are run by immigrants or the children of immigrants. But what I love about San Jose is that the belief is that it's not just about starting a business. You believe in the double bottom line. Companies that generate financial returns, no doubt, but you also believe in social returns for the betterment of the planet and the human race. Entrepreneurship is so much about, so much more than just making profits and money, although that is good, no doubt. 
It's about building societies that value competitions and compassion. It's about empowering those whose society has too often left behind, and that includes our women. Right, ladies in the room? We have so much potential to lead. Just the other night, we were at a dinner, and uh, Warren Buffett was there. And he said, the reason I've been so successful is because I've had the privilege of only competing with half of our population. Well, guess what? Ladies are now ready, and they're engaged. And so that's right. Things are changing, right, ladies? Today, American women own 10 million businesses, which represent one in every three. The Census Bureau recently reported a 27% increase in the number of women-owned businesses in the U.S. in just five years' time. That's dramatic, and that's momentum. Increasingly, America's economic growth depends on our ability to harness this untapped economic potential that we find in women. This year, our National Small Business Person of the Year, indeed, was actually two women. We were just able to announce in Washington, D.C. on Monday, get this, ladies and gentlemen, guess who showed up and was in the house with us on Monday? Mark Cuban. And have you watched Shark Tank? We had a lot of fun with him on Monday. But some of our greatest entrepreneurs started in a garage. People that you know very well, Bill Gates and Steve Jobs is an example. Their inventions didn't just change their industry, they changed countless, countless lives. Our winners this year also started in a garage. But they aren't in the computer business, they're in the coffee business. Brooke and Helen own a little company called Equator Coffee and Tea, six miles ahead in a community that you may know called San Rafael. And I can't wait to go pay a little visit to them this afternoon because I love tea, in particular green tea. It's good for you. Brooke and Helen st started in a garage, but they now employ 90 people, and they're, pro and they're uh, projecting revenues of $15 million. But let me tell you that that's not the end of the story. It's only the beginning. They uh, decided that they wanted to own their very own coffee farm so that they could actually control the beans that they were using. And so they went to Panama to a community called Cerro Punta. In this farm, Finca Sofia, a little farm they founded, was on a largely deforestated, abandoned piece of land. They planted hundreds of native shade trees on their farm, along with thousands of coffee plants. They maintain a deep commitment to sustainability all across their operations. They help to ensure that all of their farm workers' children are attending school. They support the microfinancing projects in Ecuador, Guatemala, and Nicaragua to help improve the quality of life for the coffee farms across South America. But what I like about, particularly was interested in their story, is that they care about women. They said, that they wanted to make sure that all these women who toil those fields but aren't allowed to own any land, that they would change that. And so they've been participating in a program where for every pound of coffee that you buy, they donate a certain percentage so that those women can buy the land and have a sense of ownership to secure land rights. Is that spectacular? I was really taken in by this story. So to toil and to harvest more stories like this, we're announcing herein and right now that we are adding to the vast network of SBA's counseling centers a new one right here in San Jose that will focus on women entrepreneurship. You probably know them, but now they're adding a new office here. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the network of SBA, a new counseling operation called A New America. Are you in the house? Woo! Congratulations. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. They've been helping businesses, I understand, in Berkeley and in Oakland. And now I understand we're going to be expanding your capacity to be able to serve San Jose, too. So congratulations on this growth strategy. And we know that in turn that you're going to help women commit to entrepreneurship and to helping grow their businesses. 
Let me just tell you why I'm so committed to this. For those of you who don't know my story, I was born in a little town, maybe not so small today. It's called Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico. <laughs> Thank you to the Consulate of Mexico for being here with us. I came here at the age of five, and I still remember being so emotional, leaving our family, our house, all of the neighbors, the beautiful things that we ate each day, and to come to America to settle into Los Angeles. And I remember being so concerned, but my grandmother kept saying, there is something for you in America. I know it. So sure enough, when I got to third grade and I became the milk monitor, I, I was able to write her a little note to say, abuelita, abuelita, I'm now in charge of the milk. And she said, it's not the titles that you have. It's what you do with the titles that you have that matters in this new country of yours. Bring others along and play by the rules. So over time, I became an officer of Westinghouse. And from there, I was recruited by the governor of California to serve as your secretary of transportation, to have oversight responsibility for all of transportation, business, and housing programs. So yes, I got to oversee the Highway Patrol, Department of Transportation, don't blame me for the traffic, and the DMV. It was a wonderful ride, and I hope that you saw my commitment to connectivity to get you to buses that connected to rails that connected to airports. We did an awful lot of work. But what I saw is that I tried to debundle the work as I was building the east span of the Oakland Bay Bridge. And so many of you said, we can't get access to capital, we don't know how to get contracts, and we haven't been able to counsel so that we can work our way through. So when I left office, I did what every woman seeks to do, to solve a problem, right? And so I said, well, what we need is a consultative bank. So I set out to start a community bank, the first Latino-owned bank in California in two generations. I'm proud of that work. But as I was doing that work, you know I'm not so prescient. In 2006, it was great. In 2007, I built a balance sheet. And in 2008, the economy tanked. So I had to work really hard to build my balance sheet back up. But at the end, the president called me and asked me to serve on his cabinet. So I still recall the powerful words my grandmother said. She said, if you work hard in America, Someday, you might be able to work in an office and be a secretary. She didn't know that I would hold office and become a cabinet secretary. <laughs> that is the beauty of our country, that we can harness that kind of social mobility in one generation. That is what immigration is all about. That is what an immigrant can do to contribute to our country. And I'm proud of that legacy and all of those that you are replicating over and over again. So I say to you, let's lift up entrepreneurship. That is the way that I was able to harvest my story and how you are harvesting yours with such great bounty that only happens in America. And so I salute each one of you and I ask you to honor our entrepreneurs. And the way we honor them is? by shopping small. That means go to a small store, but spend big. And so I want to remind you that as we approach Mother's Day, El Dia de las Madres, mom, dads, and grads as you're shopping, I hope that you will all reach out to a local small business in your community to honor them by spending some money there. Thank you so much for allowing me to join you today. God bless you, and God bless the United States of America. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful words, and we have some more exciting stories for you this morning, uh, local stories of people that have achieved wonderful things like the ones the administrator spoke to us about. And business owners no doubt need partners and allies, and I would say banks are very important uh, in that list, probably indispensable, and our next speaker knows them very well. Pat McGrath is the California Region Manager for Business Banking for JPMorgan Chase, which is also our lead national sponsor. 
He has over 40 years of banking experience, all of them at Chase, and their specialty finance division, which he manages, delivers SBA and leasing products to business banking clients across all regions. Mr. McGrath has influenced and assisted the local communities he has been a part of through numerous board memberships and committees throughout his career, and he has a couple of words for us. Mr. McGrath. Thank you. First off, I would, uh, I've had the opportunity several times to meet with the administrator around the country, once in her office. I will say she is a tireless advocate for small business. She did push the banks, our bank, to do more lending on our own and with the SBA. And just as importantly, she did ask for feedback about how we work with the SBA, so that was positive. Um, we at Chase are incredibly proud to be a sponsor, presenting sponsor of National Small Business Week this week with the, with the Small Business Administration. We're joining the SBA at events around the country, just like this here in San Jose, to celebrate and to help small business owners with tools and resources. Small business at Chase is not a small business, it's large. Across the country, we serve more than four million small businesses. In California alone, it's 700,000. A lot of our focus is trying to take a lot of our products and services and pull them together to make them easier for small businesses to work. I think we think we're doing a good job at that. If you look at the JD Power, we're ranked one or two across the country. I would like to mention how we're also very proud to be across the country, one of the top SBA lenders uh, in the country for year after year. Um, and I would say that myself and my colleagues were all inspired by the creativity the drive and the perseverance of small business owners that we deal with on a daily basis. <clears throat> Beyond banking, Chase is very focused on supporting the people and the organizations that support small business. That's why we're sponsoring National Small Business Week and why we have programs such as Small Business Forward that help fund not-for-profit incubators and accelerators across the country. California is a golden state of opportunities, but sometimes people need a little help assessing them. That's why J.P. Morgan Chase is partnering with some of the leading non-for-profit organizations in the community to help support more opportunity for some more small business people, especially those that are new to California and new to the country. Along with our great partnership with the SBA, both here in the Bay Area and across the country, we work closely with Bay Area and South Bay organizations such as La Cocina, the Mission Asset Fund, the Opportunity Fund of North California, Pacific Community Ventures, the Renaissance Entrepreneurship Center, the International Rescue Center, our committee, and TMC Working Development Solutions, to name a few. We've donated more than $2 million to these organizations to help bolster their outreach to the underserved entrepreneurial communities. Combining our resources and their talent will mean more businesses succeed. And we know how important it is to the families, the neighborhoods and the communities and the economy in this neighborhood. Congratulations to the SBA and everyone in the business of small business. So again, thank you to the SBA for including Chase in today's event and as a presenting sponsor of the special week. Congratulations to all of you who own businesses or who are considering it. From us at Chase, we applaud you and thank you for making San Jose, the greater Bay Area, and the whole country better. Thank you. Nobody go yet. We have some great stories that we want you to hear. And our next guest might be somebody that I possibly single-handedly made rich because he owns Sugar Bowl Bakery. <laughs> yes, Sugar Bowl Bakery was named Northern California Small Business of the Year in 2008 for living up to their mission of producing the highest quality baked goods and continuing to develop a brand name that inspires trust and quality. Its founder, Andrew Lee, was born into a Chinese family in an impoverished coastal village in South Vietnam. This was during the Vietnam War era. But fast forward to 1984, he partnered with his brothers to start a family-owned business, like many of you have. With $40,000 in savings, the five of them purchased Sugar Bowl. It was a small coffee shop in San Francisco in the Richmond district at the time. 
Today, Sugar Bowl Bakery has over 250 employees, and Andrew also serves on the board of the Asian Pacific Fund, which is a nonprofit serving vulnerable Asian Pacific Islander populations with a focus on community building. On November 25, 2013, President Obama personally recognized Andrew and his family as being one of America's model immigrant families that has made the American dream a reality. Andrew Lee. Well, thank you, uh, Kira, for that wonderful introduction. That's uh, wonderful. I would like to take this opportunity to uh, thank to the district, uh, district director of the SBA, uh, Mark Quinn. He's not here, but and the mayor, the president, Cortesi, and the administrator for uh, being here today. But they uh, had some, uh, business, some uh, business to do, so they left early. But it doesn't mean that we don't thank them for being here. Well, I'm honored and humbled to be here today and tell you my story. The uh, SBA ad administrator told us her story, incredible story. Now, I was also born in a very, very tiny village in South Vietnam during the war. Growing up during the war, it was so incredible difficult. As a, as a young boy, I would see Agent Orange spray just in front of our home almost every year. People were being killed for no reasons. Um, bullet cells you could find everywhere uh, in our yard or in our backyard or on the way to school. And every night when we heard the gun shot, we had to duck into the bunkers. And every home in my village at that time had to have a bunker just to be safe. Now during the day we would see the army from the South Vietnam governments and the GI came out to my village and show off their big tanks and automatic weapons in mass. And 10 minutes later, well, after they withdrew, they withdrew, you see a lot of liberation People we call Vietcong or VC, they came out with their AK-47. So you had no way of knowing how, where they live and where, uh, how they came out. Only 10 minutes after the army withdrew. After the war in 1975, we looked for the way to escape Vietnam. Of course, it's like a lot of Vietnamese. Uh, in San Jose or in this country. I personally fell three times, but I was lucky enough not being caught by the VC. One of my companions was shot to death during one of those times. Now, after, f after the four times, we escaped together with the whole family, and after six days and seven nights on the Pacific Ocean in a very, very tiny boat, we were robbed three times by the pirates. And we arrived in Malaysia with literally nothing left. I live in a refugee camp with about 53,000 other refugees in a very tiny island called Pulau Bidong in Malaysia for nine months. It's about three miles, square miles. I remember my best, my best dinner at, until today is still that instant cup of noodle called Maggie. After three days without food, and you know how you, you talk about being hungry, that is where I always remember that cup of instant noodle. Like many of the Vietnamese here today, my family came as the new immigrants in 1979, and if you remember that time, people called us boat people, and we sit, settled in the Bay Area since then. I was not able to speak English. I did not have any money, and was not able to find a decent job. It was very, very hard to find a decent job by not speaking the English language. 
So I went to ESL school, like many of, many of the new immigrants, in order to learn some basic skill set so I could find a decent job in this new land. Even this land, people call it was a land of opportunity. My brothers and I still struggle to make a decent living by just working as a dishwasher, a handyman in constructions, or newspaper carriers, and all, all of my sister-in-laws working as seamstresses. Now, after a long debate in 1984, we decided to pull our savings together to purchase a small coffee shop in San Francisco. It was a tiny coffee shop with about $300 sales a day, with only family members working there. Now, it was extremely risky, difficult, and the commitment was tremendous. We constantly worked 14 to 16 hours a day and seven days a week. I personally did not take a vacation for more than a decade trying to grow a small business. At the same time, I went to City College of San Francisco and later on San Francisco State University, and I got my degree there. Due to hard work, commitment, and dedication from family members, we reinvested all our profits in growing our small business until 1993, when we applied for an SBA loan. Traditional banker at that time hesitated to loan us money to build up more capacity just based on potential or lack of cash flow. Thanks to the SBA office in San Francisco, we were able to get a loan for $500,000 through the Morrison and Company. Now you know them as TMC, and one of them uh, are here today. That $500,000 loan from the SBA was a breaking point for us to build up our first manufacturing plant to make pastries and deliver to all of the hospitality um, hotels, convention centers, high-tech buildings in the whole Bay Area. The loan from the SBA enabled our family not only to continue being an entrepreneur, it also enabled us to make a decent living and grow and sustain our business. Today, we are able to employ and sustain more than 300 jobs for our wonderful employees. Many of them have been with us for more than a decade or 15 years, and some of them have been with us for more than 20 years. We work hard, we make sacrifice, we stick together as a family doing good and bad times. From time to time, we hire new employees who came here as new immigrants and I could share the pains in lacking of basic skill sets. Many of them couldn't speak English well, couldn't write English. Just like the way, just like at the time we came here earlier. So we decided to partner with our local governments, the county, the city, and the state, to offer English class to our employees to improve their basic skills so they can perform their job better, so they can talk with their peer better, and hopefully they can get promoted, and or they can become productive citizens. Many people ask me, Andrew, if you do that, and what happened if they leave you? I say, that's wonderful. You know, if one of them go out there and become a CEO of uh, Apple computers or, you know, uh, Intel. It's wonderful because we are part of their success and we love to see that. Today, Sugar Bowl Bakery's products are sold to some 30 to 40 biggest retailers in the country like Costco, Safeway, Albertson, Target, Walmart, Kroger's, Smart and Finals, and so on. 
across the United States, Mexico, Canada, and some other Asian countries. Well, small business like yours and mine across the entire United States collectively, like the my trader said earlier, are hiring two out of three working people in America. All of us small business have here today or elsewhere in the country should be very proud of what we do and make no mistake about it. Regardless how strong you are, how capable you are, or you are a hero, you still need help. Like me, the small business loan in 1993 helped my family business propel to the next level and also help to sustain employment in this most dynamic region on earth where employment is so competitive. You may not know this, but the SBA was responsible for the success of some incredible company in Silicon Valley, just like the uh, May Trader talked earlier, like Intel and Apple Computer and Costco, they are in Pacific Northwest. Hopefully someday, your company or our company can be one of them, becoming famous because everything starts small. Now our family was lucky enough that during the immigration speak in San Francisco back in 2013, President Obama used our family story to showcase to the world about the immigrations, immigrants' perseverance, hard work, dedication, and risk-taking ability. He said that regardless where we are coming from or whoever we are, we are the country of immigrants and every one of us have the same opportunity to be treated equally and be successful in this great nation if we will call for it. And that is so true. Thank you and have a great day. We have one more speaker for you before we get you to your workshops. I was hoping I could get your attention back to the podium and maybe ask the people in the hallway if you can keep it quiet. I, I've been told it's hard to, to listen. Shh. I hate doing that. Shh. <laughs> Thank you so much. Guadalajara seems to be well represented this morning because our next speaker uh, is from that small town in Guadalajara and she is also living the American dream. In 1986, when she was just 20 years old, Ms. Castellón decided to move to San Jose to join her extended family like so many people have done. And with no formal higher education, she joined a manufacturing firm in 1993 to help her family. But unforeseen circumstances nudged Ms. Castellón to launch her own bench tech solutions in Santa Clara in 2002. I'm speaking about Maria Castellón. She dedicated her life to grow her business. She was the CEO, the salesperson, the accountant, the payroll manager, the receptionist, who knows about wearing multiple hats in this room. Whatever had to be done to keep the doors open. After 20 years in the manufacturing sector, the Bench Tech Solutions team estimates they will reach $6 million in annual sales from revenues for clients such as PG&E, Lawrence Livermore Labs, Tesla, Apple, and Google. To share with us a little bit of her story, here is Ms. Maria Castellón. Thank you, Kira, for the gracious introduction. Good morning. Um, I'm honored to be invited here today to share my story with you. My name is Maria Castellón. I'm the CEO of BenchTech Solutions. BenchTech Solutions, um, we specialize in um, designing and manufacturing custom workbenches 
for medical device, pharmaceutical, automotive, among many other ones. I build BenchTech with these four simple ideas. Having a clear dream, having a passion, being committed, and hard work. Early on, my father became my hero. His dream became my dream. Nearly 29 years ago, I came to the United States unable to speak English and only a high school education, but I had a dream to start a business and to be a role model to my family. When I was a child, I saw my father struggle to provide us to a better life. My father was so committed to his family. He split this time, his time between Mexico and the United States, only coming home for a few periods of time. His message to me was that his sacrifices were to ensure that his family will have a better life than he did. His sacrifice became my sacrifice. Within less than 16 years, I was able to start my company. In 2002, a series of events unfolded that allowed me the opportunity to start BenchTech. Part of it, it was seeing the opportunity. The other part was desperation, since the company that I worked for closed his business. It was the perfect storm, and I quickly jumped into action registered my business, went and got a, build, a small, tiny building in Santa Clara, which is the best time to start a business when the economy is down. Rent, everything is just so amazing. Uh, apologize. I apologize. It is not a secret that starting a business is challenging, but starting a company in the Silicon Valley I believe possess another layer of unique challenges as well. There are hundreds, if not thousands, of business all, of all, all in shapes and sizes in the region. Overcoming the barriers of being an unknown brand and build a business in a highly competitive area taught me to be self-reliant and seek the support of others to carry on, encourage myself to keep finding new clients and building my company. Regardless of how many no's, I still was committed. Nothing was gonna stop me to pursuing the very first dream that I came to, pursue, to achieve. The no's were challenging. I often questioned my ability to build the business. However, those were also the moments that I heard my father's voice of encouragement telling me to, um, to never give up. One of the keys to my success was choosing the right mix of employees, mentors, and support of long life friends and family. Tom Clark, my mentor and previous employer, became instrumental in my life in learning the business of design and manufacturing custom workbenches. He encouraged me to start taking business classes. He empowered me to the best that I can be and believe in me when I did not believe. As many of you in this room already know, running a business is challenging in long hours in times where you feel lonely. It was time that I felt like I started crying late at night, thinking that, am I gonna make it? My family is my rock and my biggest supporters. I come from a family of six, in one way or another, we have, su have support each other. My brother, Jorge Castellon, is not only my business partner, but is my best friend. He does a brilliant job 
overseeing, managing the manufacturing, designing amazing drawings for our customers. And his positive attitude energized me and energized our employees. Along my journey, my purpose is to make a difference, to pursue their, to make a difference in other people's, to pursue their dreams. The same way my angel mentors have done, have been doing, have done and been doing for me. I would like to leave you with one, one final thought. I believe that all of us have the desire for what kind of life we would like to have and live. Please realize there are so many people around you willing to help you. They will recognize your ability, your capacity, and potential to achieve, to achieve your dreams. I challenge you to believe in yourself so you can too achieve your dream. Thank you, you, thank you, have a good morning, and I wish you all the best. They caught me red-handed. There's so many fun things happening today. Maria, gracias por contar tu historia. Thank you so much for speaking from the heart. She was our last speaker and we're ready to go on to the next phase because the workshops this morning are gonna be starting in about seven minutes and I wanted to share with you that some of the topics that are gonna to be touched upon are access to capital, understanding Mrs. dashboards, using technology and social media, borrowing to expand your business, business taxes, and, men and there's a mentoring meetup also with Silicon Valley Talent Partnership. These workshops are gonna take place in the wing rooms. And speaking of taxes, I wanted to call your attention to a feedback session that is going to take place at 12.30, this is gonna be in the city council chambers, about the proposed city business tax. So all business owners are invited to join that session at 12.30, of course, to give your feedback, and it's, of course, in your best interest. So 12.30 in the city council chambers uh, for this feedback on the proposed city um, tax. So that's really how our program concludes right here at the podium, but we have an exciting morning for you on behalf of Univision and myself. I thank you for inviting me and for coming here and for being really the thread of that fabric that makes America so beautiful and wonderful. This is a crucial year in what is represented in this room in terms of vision and commitment and strategy and how they say in Spanish, garra. That's what makes the United States the wonderful country that it is. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you, congratulations, and please enjoy the program.